love this. Okay. Oh god. It's that hog. Oh. It wasn't the hog though. Get him with the bomb, get him with the bomb. Oh, yep. Oh, there it is. Oh, I dropped my mech on him and he's still not dead. There it is. Ah, oh, that's the roadhog we all what know and love. <laughs> How's this <laughs> not dead? <laughs> there it is. I my bomb, I dropped my mech on him and he still f lived. That's a hog <laughs> moment right there. That's an act. Oh, dude. I'd love to see what the comments say on this one. They definitely flamed this guy. I was like, you, dude, that's a skill issue. Hope people say he's not broken. I'm playing bomb. I hate Roadhog. Roadhog means excuse. You were out of position. We breathed when it exploded to get the damage resistance. And the answer to why he's not dead, you're trying to 1v5 as D.Va. That's never going to work. Ah, uh, dude, I had to at least find one. We found it. Three things the Overwatch community can't accept. Part five. Uh -oh. Number three, Elo Hell doesn't exist. You've just plateaued and need to get better. Sorry to tell you. Number two, Overwatch 2 is at its most balanced state since the game came out. Number one, you don't miss the old Overwatch. You miss the way how you felt about old Overwatch. Okay, I'll give you that last one. That last one's kind of based. Um, That one's kind of based. That's like when people say 2CP. I, unless you're talking about like old Overwatch, like you're talking like 2016 Overwatch, that might be a little different. Uh, but if you're talking like Overwatch One versus Overwatch Two, like people are like, "Oh, two CP was better, two tanks is better," like that, that that's cope, that's cope. Uh, if you're talking like the old days, maybe I'll give you that one. Here's your useful Junker Queen text you didn't know, and if this video helps you out, then help me out. Rampage Rollouts. The Drucker Queen's ultimate dash is straightforward. You can use it on sloped objects to cross very long distances and reach high grounds. Learn an effective rollout or two, and you can sneak out a free fight win as you fly into some squishy standing on a backline high ground. Rampage Wall Stall and Wall Slide. Drucker Queen's ultimate is easy to travel too far with. But since it slides on walls, you can stall the ultimate for a short time to control how far you travel. The more That's directly good. you aim at the wall, the longer it will take you to slide off. So go more parallel for more distance, and more perpendicular for less distance. Using this, you can end your ultimates close to your targets, where you can quickly finish them off. Also, you can use this wall slide tech to sneak through doorways and around corners to catch enemies by surprise. Vertical Dagger Pull Since Junker Queen's dagger pulls enemies towards her, she can use this to pull enemies for much longer and make them easy to kill by pulling them upward. So when you land the dagger, get as close above your target as possible to lift them surprisingly high for an easy kill. Here's three useful Junker Though, like, when I say niche, I mean, like, the most niche thing I could, you probably could have came up with. But hey, you know what? A lot of people probably don't know about those, so... That's okay, it's kind of neat. Three clutch Ramatra tips every new Ramatra player needs to know. When playing versus Orisa, position yourself inside your shield so she can't spin you out. Instead of ulting while in Nemesis Is that form, true? cancel Nemesis form, then ult immediately after That's good. to regain your armor. When playing versus Sigma, when he ults you, you can stare up and block while in Nemesis form to take reduced damage. Those Three are actually really good Ramatra. tips. I didn't know about the Orisa one though. That's actually news to me. New Ramatra player. <laughs> I guess that's a good point, everyone. I guess when this was released was probably a new Ramacha player. I feel like the fact that Overwatch 2 has already like completely fallen oh. off the face of the earth is quite the yeah. accomplishment. How has it already fallen off the face of the earth? Hold on, I'm gonna open my Twitch. This is 5 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. A lot of the biggest creators are not on at this point. Most of them gotten off. Seagull's not on. Uh, Jay's not on. Like, mo most of them aren't on right now. 37k isn't amazing. Um, but we're also towards the end of Season 2. And nothing's really happening right now. Super's on Super just gets on late. But th this is this time of day, there's not really a whole lot kind of happening. And this, like, we're kind of in a little bit of a boring period. This is what happens in free-to-play games. Is you have these, like, seasonal shifts, right? Where... Um, towards the beginning of the season, a bunch of new content, a bunch of hype, everywhere it comes to play it. But most free-to-play players now just jump between games all the time. Like, Apex just had a big update, right? What's Apex at? 84k? A Apex just had a big update, so Apex is back up at the top. Apex was down here. Like, we were over here at, like, the 55k, and Apex was down here at the 30k just two or three days ago. So, big update comes out, everyone goes to play it. Fortnite does it, Apex does it, Valorant does it. We do it, like, it's just how the systems go. Um, of course, Overwatch is on a little bit of a slow period right now, but it hasn't died. Like, Overwatch 1 numbers, and where we are now, is not even close. Like, it's, it, 
just absolutely ridiculously wrong, but okay, let's hear the rest of the I take. Like the fact that Overwatch 2 has already like completely fallen off the face of the earth is quite the yeah. accomplishment. <laughs> like that one week period where it was the beta and they were giving out people beta keys for watching streams and it had like a million viewers on Twitch or whatever and people are like, dude, Overwatch is back! And then it's just literally back into the exact same spot it was before. I mean, What's it not? makes sense, right? Overwatch 2 was just a big balance patch. Yeah. And that that's legit. Kinda. It's legit all it was. So like, it got hyped for a week. And then like, it's just the same people that still kept playing Overwatch 1. And they got that little balance patch. And now they can play Overwatch 2. I feel like the... F How long ago was this? This last year? Is this like a year ago? Like, <laughs> no, it's not. Like... Uh, I guess I would have agreed on the beta, but that's not really true. The gameplay itself has actually changed fundamentally. It's very different. Um, the reason why it's marketed as Overwatch 2 as opposed to Overwatch updated um, is because the 2 is to do with the PvE when that, when that releases. Um, they made a decision as a company, and it was the best decision that they made, and they realized, hey, our game is dying. This PvE stuff is taking way longer than we thought. And they turned the whole ship around and they brought it back and said, Hey, like, we're sorry. We shouldn't have. We were trying to release these at the same time. Multiple complications happen. So we're decoupling them. Then there's PvE and PvP. So we got PvP early as a pre release early access. If you look up Overwatch 2, it is described as an early access game. Um, which some people say is an excuse. They're like, oh, they just use that to get around whatever. It's like, no, but like, you can argue that, sure. And like, to be fair, that's, that's more opinion based than anything. That's not really like fact. There's nothing factual to argue on either side. That is opinion based. The part of Overwatch 2 is actually big is the PvE. And they couldn't release the PvP as Overwatch 1. And then when it swaps to Overwatch 2 with the PvE content, the PvP doesn't change. That doesn't really make sense. Like, the PvP was going to update anyways, so why would it not be... Like, like you have to understand, Overwatch 2 was, was pigeonholed. They didn't have a choice. They had to launch when the game brought back its PvP side early as Overwatch 2. You can't wait for the PvE to go Overwatch 2. Like, think about that from a marketing perspective. How would you do that? It's not possible. They were screwed, you know? Like, they just... They, they had nowhere to go. They made the best decision that they could make based off of previous decisions that old leadership and old people had made, like Jeff, Jeff had launched and, you know, made his big thing at BlizzCon 2019 saying Overwatch 2 is coming out. It's going to be this big PvE, like replayable game, you know. There were so many big promises that were made before that could no longer, like, be all made at the same time. All the promises could be fulfilled at once. They had to do it over time. And so, yes, Overwatch 2 is not 300,000 viewers on Twitch every single day popping off, uh, destroying every other game on the market, but it is now a free-to-play game in the free-to-play system where most free-to-play players are going and jumping from whatever game is good to whatever game is good. Overwatch will never truly die again because of that system, but it will definitely have more per periods of, like, kind of boredom where like, nothing's really happening, like we're in right now. Anyways, weird. I don't, these, I, the Overwatch is dead takes, I don't really... I don't really mess with them that much. Um, unless, like, there's actually big things happening, and there isn't, so. Ooh, this is my favorite series. Um. Oh. El Blanco. That's Spanish. Yeah. It's Day of the Dead. No, that's not Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead is Dia de los Muertos. Oh. El Blanco is Rolled. the... Wait. <laughs> Rolled. This is gone. Nabu? <laughs> That's a good name. His name is Reaper. So she teleports. She has little blaster pistols. She runs really fast. Nailed it. Nailed it. Her name is Tracer. What does she look like? What is her, what is her name? Like if, if she was your friend, what would you call her? She would just tell me her name. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Kind of getting rolled. Hi, hi. So she flies and she has a rocket launcher. Mira. Next one. Jasmine. 
Jasmine. I can see it as Jasmine. You like that? I can see it. Those are always nice. In between the, the terrible takes and the absolutely... What, is, what was that? Dude, that scared me. I know how to... Okay. On a nerf hog. Oh boy. Okay, let's hear this. I know how to fix Roadhog without taking away the one shot. Alright, let's take a look at why the one shot is bad. The one shot is bad because it feels bad. So he just hooks you, reels you in, shoots you in the head, and you die, and you can't do anything about it. How do you fix that? They've tried to take away the part where you get shot once and die, and that made it completely unplayable. I thought that was a bad thing. We want to keep the character viable. You leave the interrupt on the first part of the hook, on the real end part of the hook. You make it so the characters can react. So, you would have to use hook a lot smarter. You can still hook around other people's abilities. So say Ana's already used sleep. You can just hook Ana and still sink her. But if Ana has sleep, you can't just hook and one-shot her. So, that's how I would do it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree. I, might I don't even think... Uh, is that Would that fundamentally even be possible? possible? Because you're stunning them Without and pulling them in, the right? Right, I don't even know if that would be fundamentally possible because you're you are displacing them. That's like a hard CC. I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible to be honest with you. Like from a game boy gameplay perspective, but it's not terribly the worst idea. But to be honest with you, I don't know. we'll see. Here's how I would fix Roadhog in Overwatch 2. As we all Oh god, is this, is, is this a bunch of how to fix Roadhog ones? Oh boy. Oh no, Roadhog is severely busted at the moment. And the reason why is due to his hook and one-shot combo. Nearly every single DPS and support player will get killed if ever hooked by Roadhog. Now I've seen a lot of people suggest that we just nerf his damage or nerf his health or just kind of rework him entirely, but I think I have a better idea. Allow the player who gets hooked by Hog to not only shoot, but also use utility while being pulled towards him. If you don't get what I mean, then here's Oh, it's the same, it's I'm the same idea. Bastion, and right after I use my vape, he turns into his tank form trying to kill me, knowing that I can't heal anymore. He then starts shooting me, which rapidly takes down my health. That is until I hook him. At this point, it's pretty much a guaranteed death for him, as he's now stunned and can no longer shoot, and he's already just low on health in general. But if this Bastion had been able to shoot... So basically, the, I, the idea is, like, no more CC on the hook. And this is my point. Players are basically... But so, like, wh where does that stop? Can you blink out of it? Can you somber TP out of it? Can you sprint out of it? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I sprint, I guess it'd be a little bit weird because it's not like a hard break, but could you technically pin? Dude, what happens if a Roadhog goes to pull you in and you pin him? He's like, he's pulling you in and then you go, <laughs> like, just, he just run his ass over. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, dude. Useless once they get hooked by Roadhog. You may be thinking, though, well, that's the point. It punishes bad positioning. Let's be honest, though. When playing against Roadhog, there's no such thing as a good position. He'll always find a way to hook you. Even if that means he's flanking around the entire map just I don't know if it just would work. Or vaping his way through a tank form bastion just to get to the back line and kill one Mercy. And that's not fun to play against. It's just straight up busted. Now, as I said earlier, a good fix for this would to be allow players to both shoot and use their utility while being hooked towards a Roadhog. And here's what that might look like here. Let's say I'm playing as Ash and just got hooked by Roadhog. While being hooked towards him, I could pull up my coach. What if you got hooked his break? Could you shield? So I'm out of one shot range. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why would I ever use Roadhog if Ash can always escape using her coach gun? That's the thing though. She doesn't always have her coach gun. There's a cooldown. If this were the case, then that means Roadhog would now actually have to watch out or listen for Ash using her coach gun. As when she does so, Roadhog will now know that she has no escape whatsoever. In my eyes, this gives both parties a fair chance. Roadhog players need to keep track of when certain abilities are used so they can ensure they're hook target doesn't have a possible escape route. DPS and support players will need to keep track of when it may or may not be safe to use their ability. I'm warming up to the idea a little bit. This guy's done a better job of explaining it. wondering how this escape route might look across different characters, then you're in luck because I have some lined up for you here. Genji could use his deflect, Mei could use her wall or cryo freeze, Lucio can boop him, Moria could fade, and Zen could kick. Keep in mind, that's only five characters. There are so many other How do I feel for the Roadhog players, though? Again, though, this is just my idea on how they just feel like it feels terrible? Agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments like, below. I, I almost wonder if that's almost too strong, where Roadhog would feel terrible then. Not, be, not one to defend Roadhog players, but just saying.